it's a bad idea to bet against India. That is what Minister of State for Electronics and IT, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, tweeted in response to concerns that Foxconn's decision to pull out of the Vedanta chip-making joint venture was a blow to India's semiconductor fabrication ambitions. Chandrasekhar said Foxconn's decision would have no impact on India's goal. And it meant that both companies would pursue their India strategies independently. He cited failure to source a technology partner as the cause for the split. But the opposition had a different take. Bad news for India's chip-making plans. That is what Congress leader and former Union Minister Milind Deora tweeted. Congress General Secretary Jairam Ramesh also criticised the government and raised questions over outcomes of MOUs and global investor summits. On July 10th, Taiwanese major Foxconn walked out of its joint venture with the Anil Agarwal-led Vedanta Group to set up a 1.54 trillion rupee facility in Gujarat. After an MOU was signed with the Gujarat government in 2022, earlier this year, the JV had announced that a semiconductor and display manufacturing facility would be set up in the Dholera Special Investment Region. Before Gujarat, Maharashtra was explored as a destination for the plant. For its part, the Vedanta Group said it had lined up other partners to set up the foundry. It added that Vedanta had a license for 40 nanometer chips from a device manufacturer. And it would shortly acquire a license for 28 nanometer ones too. Meanwhile, after parting ways with Vedanta, Foxconn reportedly said it plans to apply for incentives under the center's semiconductor manufacturing policy, adding that it was working to submit an application. This split has been seen as a setback in some quarters, as the Foxconn Vedanta JV was one of the first three players to apply in January 2022 to be eligible under the center's semiconductor scheme. It was offered 50% of the project cost upfront and was meant to make 28 nanometer chips. But back and forth on technology negotiations reportedly put things on hold. Also, none of the three projects under the semiconductor scheme has received clearance from the India Semiconductor Mission. Both Singapore-based IGSS and Dubai-based ISMC, which had a tie-up with Tower Corporation for a 24,730 crore rupee technology project, have been asked to give fresh proposals. On June 1st, the centre reopened the window for applying to its 76,000 crore rupee semiconductor plan after these three applicants ran into hurdles. After the first 45-day January 2022 window, the new one will be open until December 2024 and is meant for both new and existing applicants. There has been good news too. India has been able to rope in Micron, which has agreed to invest about 2,350 crore rupees in a chip testing and packaging plant. However, while the wafers will be imported to the testing plant, Business Standard has reported that talks have also commenced on the possibility of Micron setting up a fab plant for memory chips. Keeping all these developments in mind, is the Foxconn Vedanta split a setback for India's overall semiconductor manufacturing ambitions? It's not a setback. And I would also say that it's not even a stumble. Uh, as you rightly said, it's more of a readjustment. It was clear that both the partners, Foxconn or Vedanta, they didn't truly have a, a technology partner. So they would have taken that much more time. And now what uh, you know, the two parties are saying, we'll find our own independent technology partner. And that may be good for the country that you know, we'll have instead of one proposal, there'll be two proposals. The Micron uh, proposal being approved by the cabinet is a bigger news in my opinion, simply because we have to uh, recognize one important fact. Let's say if the uh, fab came first and the wafer was produced, what will happen to the wafer? It has to be packaged. And, uh, you know, nobody would set a fab here um, and packaged elsewhere and then sold internationally. So it is very important that the packaging units come here first. And Micron has taken the lead. That will also set a pace uh, or, uh, you know, give indication to the domestic players also to get into it. So packaging, in my opinion, uh, you know, going ahead 
of the foundry or the fab projects is a very good uh, development, in my opinion. I think one company not being able to find a partner or not being able to, uh, you know, uh, be aligned in their way of doing things is quite a novel thing to happen. So I don't think, uh, I would still look at the big picture very much intact. And I don't think it's so much policy because uh, quite frankly, the government has really, uh, you know, uh, gone beyond uh, what we had imagined because it's not only uh, a payment of 50% by the central government, largely in terms of incentives, subsidies, whatever you call it, but also that it's paripasu. Now, that's a big thing, you know, because, and that makes it very practical and we are very happy that the government uh, uh, in fact, I think the Honorable Prime Minister himself announced that. And then state governments are backing it up with almost a 20% additional uh, thing. So from an incentives perspective, I think, uh, no, I, I would not sort of advocate that anything more is required. Uh, obviously, but the I can imagine from the semiconductor business companies making this large an investment, they want to be assured of the markets. And they are still wondering whether they will be able to make it here competitively uh, and is there a large enough market? And if so, for which type? Uh, this thing. So it's a it's a business case. And I think just let us give these companies some more time. They are all, I'm sure, looking at this very seriously. Industry experts still appear bullish, especially due to the September 2022 modifications that made the semiconductor and display manufacturing policy more competitive thanks to the cabinet revising incentives across the spectrum. However, they caution that steps in the semiconductor ladder, going from packaging to fabs, may have to be followed. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. She's working her way to the corner office. Business Standard.